In 2002, when I was 13, my uncle showed me his cool HP IPAC H 1915 pocket PC at a family get together. I was really into technology, so I got hooked on checking out all of its features. Even though I had no reason to own one, I knew I had to have one. Jump to 2003, now I'm 14, and starting middle school. I had saved up money from Christmas, birthdays, and allowances. One weekend, while going through computer ads in the newspaper, I found a deal at Office Depot, a Toshiba E335 on sale for $299. I was determined to get it. So I convinced my mom to take me to Office Depot and I bought it. Walking into school on Monday, I felt awesome. Ready to show off my new Toshiba Pocket PC with a cool color screen. While my friends had older Palm Pilots, I was excited about the fun things we could do. We used a program on my Pocket PC to control the TV and VCR remotes in class. The whole day was spent turning the TV on, cranking up the volume, and turning it off, doing it over and over again, at least 15 times. Even though my first Pocket PC doesn't work anymore, the battery's dead, the charger's lost, and the stylus is missing, I got all nostalgic and found a brand new boxed Toshiba E335 on eBay. Without thinking twice, I bought it. Now, I want to take you back to 2003 and share the excitement of unboxing it with me. Before we get into the fun stuff, I just want to say thanks. You're the reason I love working on Circus Fair content. The support and excitement you've shown mean a lot to me. Now, I could use your help. If you like what you've been seeing, if you found something useful, entertaining, or that just made your day better, could you do me a favor and hit that subscribe button? To play around with this pocket PC, I've taken out my Dell Dimension E310 from 2005. This bad boy is packing a Pentium 4 with hyper-threading technology. She's about as average as it gets, but it'll work well for our pocket PC adventures. Alright, unboxing the Toshiba E335 Pocket PC. PC. It was already open to verify that the contents were actually in there. Looks like we've got manuals and software. First these first. Looks like we've got a quick start card. Telling us what's in the box, pocket PC, stylus, adapter, got the cradle, I remember the cradle, that was pretty cool, and then there's this like battery switch, which I always thought was weird, but it's kind of like a master reset switch. Pocket PC user's guide. The master end user license agreement. I better read that. Information. Important information. Important information on static electricity. Backing up and restoring data.
There's a lot of license agreements. Only got the one year limited warranty. Funny thing, I actually had to send mine in for a warranty repair. The SD card slot didn't work. So I remember doing that with one of these. A product registration card. I don't think I ever sent that in. And then the user guide. All sorts of joys. Looks like we have Microsoft Photo Base. Or no, ArcSoft Photo Base for Pocket PC. And it's featuring an E740, which is the model I wanted so bad, but it was more expensive. And it came with Wi-Fi. And then we've got our Pocket PC E330 series, which includes Microsoft Active Sync, Outlook 2000, and Adobe Acrobat Reader for Pocket PC. Also included is this nice, very nice leather pouch. It's actually smells like leather. Very nice. We've got our charging cord, our power cord. The beautiful cradle. Ooh, it's exciting to be the first person to use this in so many years. There's the Toshiba Cradle. Pocket PC slides right in the top. That plugs into your computer for syncing. And then the beautiful Toshiba E335 Pocket PC. First time this one's ever been out of the bag. Woohoo, I get to peel the plastic. Hmm. Beautiful. And it says flip this switch to activate your PDA on or off. A couple of quick things that I remember. So your power switch is up here. You have your headphone jack. On the side, there's a dedicated button for voice recordings. We also have our volume rocker. On the front, we've got some dedicated buttons, a home button, contacts, tasks, and calendar. And then you've got these four-way directional pad. And your little speaker is right here. And then on the side, you've got a freshly never used stylus. I always had a hard time keeping track of the stylus. Let's use the stylus to switch on the pocket PC. I wonder if it's still got any life in it. Nothing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the deck here and slide the pocket PC in because you could also charge your pocket PC with the dock.
Everything is so nice and fresh. Alright, let's slide this beautiful Toshiba into its charging cradle and see if we get any power. Woohoo! There we go! Pocket PC 2002. Tap the screen to set up your Pocket PC. You gotta align the screen. This isn't a capacitive touch like the iPhone, it requires a stylus. And it's telling us you can use your stylus two ways single tap and tap and hold tap and hold is like a right click then it's wanting you to try it out cut and then we want to paste it very important time zone mountain Setup is complete. Tap your screen. It's exciting. January 1st, 2002. We definitely need to fix that. So we'll go here. Two. Oh, five. A.M. January 26th, 2024. It also gives you the option to set a visiting location for all the business travelers. Then there are also alarms. Looks like you can only set four. Then you want to save. It's similar to a Windows computer. You got your start. Gives you some various things. You click programs. You've got infrared receive. You can send info between two devices. You've got a backup. It's got your calculator. That's a pretty good user interface on a calculator. Let's see if 2 plus 2 still equals 4. It does. Oh, it even has an exchange rate, which that's not going to be accurate. This is based on 2002. We've got games. The only game we currently have is Solitaire. Mm, and that's Solitaire. We've got our file explorer, just like on a computer. Pocket Excel. That would be a disaster to try and write equations. Good news, even in here, 2 plus 2 still does, in fact, equal 4. I'm assuming this is more for, like, viewing an Excel spreadsheet or maybe making a very minor adjustment. Same thing with Pocket Word. It's got suggestive typing. I think we have the option... Of transcribe okay so I think you can write transcriber reliably recognizes words and phrases written in cursive print and mixed print and cursive styles numbers and arbitrary combinations of symbols that's actually pretty good well right as I say that doesn't recognize something. So that'd be good for taking notes. In fact, I remember taking notes using that. We've got classic MSN Messenger. The home basically gives us an overview. Our programs. 
for games, main. This is the notes app that I used to always write with. Hello. This is a note. That's pretty cool. We've got Windows Media Player. It's optimizing my streaming playback settings. Pretty cool. We've got our calendar. I'm gonna make a new appointment. Work. I'm put location. Basically, all the normal stuff. I'm gonna put that I have work on Monday. There we go. Got work from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Contacts. The cool thing is, is you can activate these all by your buttons down here. Your calendar. Your tasks. The home screen. Contacts. Got our voice recorder. This is a very important voice note. Exceptional audio quality. You got your settings, click password, power. I think we might have a dead battery. I did order a replacement battery, if that is a problem. There's your connections. And on the top, you also have a SD card reader. This is just a blank to keep stuff from getting in it. And there's your microphones. I'm going to leave it here and see if I can get it to charge up a little bit. Well, we ran into a bit of a problem. I plugged it into the charger. And look. Got a little bit of an explosion. Oh, luckily, I do have a replacement battery. We're going to perform that real quick before we continue it looks like it broke this screw bracket as well so we're going to probably have to address that i'm going to use my trusted iFixit tool kit there's always a link below for it it really is one Expanded battery. Really don't want it to like explode all over me. Preferably not the program I'd like to be on. It's a pretty sad looking battery. super glue right here and right here to get those back on i cannot find my super glue so for now we're gonna put it back together and then when i get some super glue from amazon i'll fix these two all right let's see how good we are at holding a charge now well, that's better well i don't know if it's better we'll see if this battery holds up I'm going to leave this here for another little bit and see if it charges up. Great news. After installing the new battery, I put it on the charger. It's holding a charge. It's not exploding. As we can see here, go into settings, system, power, 95%. So, 
a heck of a lot better than this ginormous exploded battery. Glad it didn't do too much damage. Now that we know the Pocket PC is in good working order, we're going to go ahead and install the CD that came with the box. Gently open it. That up. Active content in Army computer or disk closed personal information. Yeah. Ooh, getting started. I don't remember this at all. Start here. I don't really want Outlook 2000. We'll get Active Sync installed. Now it's telling me that I need to connect the Pocket PC. I'm going to plug the charger into the cradle. Pocket PC has been plugged in. I'm not sure if I think that DVD CD player in this bad boy has got much life left. Which is funny because this computer has hardly ever been used. It literally sat in an office, turned off since it was brand new. Just about. It probably had a year or two of service, but like 30 minutes to an hour each week. And it was never moved, always left in the same spot. And I don't think anything was ever installed. I, mean, I think the only thing installed on it was QuickBooks. Boy, it's really stinky. Wow, it found it. Establish a partnership. Whew. Them's commitment words there. It wants a full blown partnership. That up is complete. We have got a connection. Inbox attention required. I think we might as well download the connection wizard. I guess that's not an option. Bunch of ads they want to sell you some extra stuff i go install adobe pocket reader for pc pocket pc so downloads it to the computer and then through active sync it downloads it to pocket pc Looks like it's installed. Well, now that we're all connected, might as well put some games on there. That's basically what it's good for. Because let's be real, that's exactly what 14 year old me did. Before we start installing some games, I remember that this really didn't have a lot of memory. I just happened to have my original SD card from way back in 2004 whopping 256 megabytes if i recall this was like 80 dollars back in the day and just in case you're wondering this is a much newer hp ipac one of the more recent releases it looks like it's dead but let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a video on this one it's in perfect condition with a brand new battery but anyway back to the Task on hand. I'll stick this SD card in. Now I've downloaded a few games onto this. So let's see if we can actually get something going here. Monopoly. So far, it looks good. Again, it's going to install it on the computer. And then, as you can see, I'm going to start installing on the pocket PC. 
That one's done. In City 2000. Games that go. Let's install it. Perfect. I didn't want to go through and show video of me installing each and every game. I just wanted you to see the process of putting a game from Windows XP to Pocket PCs. So here's the list of the games we're going to review on the Pocket PC. We got Monopoly. We're going to do SimCity 2000. We're going to do Age of Empires Gold Edition. And after that, we're going to go through Bejeweled. We're going to do the Need for Speed Beta as well as a game called Squirmy. Okay, gaming on the Toshiba E335 Pocket PC. I'm going to kick things off with Monopoly. I've always been a huge fan of Monopoly. Now, back in the day, this would have been so awesome because you could either play against the computer or set up a game with your buddies or family and take turns playing and passing around the pocket PC. For this round, I'm setting up a match with two AIs against me. Dana is going to be the first computer and Guybrush gets to be the second one. Ooh, advance to boardwalk. Of course I'm going to buy it. Overall, it's your typical Monopoly experience. And you know what? That's fine by me. It's just awesome. Monopoly is hands down my favorite board game. And since shooting this part of the video, I've spent at least eight hours playing Monopoly on this pocket PC. Now let's talk about SimCity 2000. Back in the day, I used to play SimCity on my computer, but I never got it for the pocket PC. So first things first, it asks us to set up our new city. I, of course, named mine Circuit Sphere, kept it on easy mode, and went with the default size of 1900. As I got started, I realized I was struggling a bit with the controls for this game. I didn't really feel like spending a ton of time figuring them all out. Instead, I went with one of the preloaded cities, Dolesville Heights. Most of the controls are at the top of the screen, and the directional pad down here comes in handy for navigating the city. I quickly added some more roads, and zone some commercial areas right by the beach. Then, just for fun, I decided to wreak some havoc and randomly bulldoze some buildings. Down here, we've got our power plant. We can also zoom in and out. That's really helpful considering we're playing a city building game on this tiny screen. When I've got some free time, I'd like to dive deeper into this game and learn all the controls. It's definitely the kind of game that could suck me in for hours. Now, let's dive into Age of Empires 
Gold Edition. The game is set up in landscape mode, and my player name is going to be, yep, you got it, Circuit Sphere. This game is much bigger than the last two, and it took about three times as long to download on my pocket PC. Now, I gotta admit, I've never tried Age of Empires before, so cut me some slack. Starting off in campaign mode, it throws me into the world with two dudes to begin. For those not in the know, Age of Empires is a historical, real-time strategy game. Each level has achievements that introduce you to the game, and they get trickier as you go along. Now, the main goal in Age of Empires is to build an army and take down your opponents. Along the way, you've got to gather stuff like wood, stone, and food to construct more advanced buildings and spawn more powerful troops. In the level I played, I collected some wood, hunted some animals for food, and attacked a rival base. I spent about 30 minutes on it initially, but after I filmed, I came back and I got hooked and ended up playing it for like another eight hours. Now we're diving headfirst into the adrenaline-packed world of Need for Speed High Stakes. I'm telling you, Need for Speed is the ultimate gaming thrill for me. It's like the holy grail of video game franchises. I've raced my way through almost every edition, but here's the twist. I've never laid my hands on the pocket PC version before. So, I opted to kick things off with the single arcade mode. My ride of choice was a sleek Mercedes-Benz SLK. I loved the look of these cars in the early 2000s. Now, getting the hang of the game was a bit wild. Using the directional pad for gas and brake and steering the beast with the stylus, it really did take some time to get used to it. So, here's kind of the unfortunate thing. It felt like the race was never ending and things got a bit, well, bland. Hey, though, what do you expect? It's the pocket PC we're talking about, and you can only push the limits so far with graphics and processors, right? Then, I eventually found myself stuck against a mountain. And that was the moment I thought, okay, Need for Speed High Stakes, it's time for us to part ways. So, I slammed the brakes, called it quits, and now I can mark this Need for Speed off my list. You know, overall, it's not an ideal version of Need for Speed. However, when I was younger though, I probably would have spent hours playing this, thinking it was cutting edge and the future. The last two games that I tried were pretty simple games, so I'm not gonna go into a big in-depth review of them, but the first one was Bejeweled, then the second one was Squirmy. Squirmy's kind of like a copy of the snake game we all played on our old Nokia phones. I really enjoyed playing Bejeweled, and I even have the trial version on my pocket PC back in the day. Squirmy, it was alright too, especially since I haven't played Snake in ages. But, to be real with you guys, it's just more enjoyable on an old Nokia. I hope you had a good time joining me on this trip down memory lane. Using this old school tech was a blast, just like I remembered it. When the camera was off, I had a great time playing the games we loaded onto it for hours. The Pocket PC was a cool and unique gadget from the time before smartphones. And I love going back to those days. But before you leave, I found my original Toshiba E335 and its box. It's pretty cool that I've kept it all these years. 
Anyways, thanks for watching the video and for all your support. I really enjoy chatting with you in the comments. And that's going to do it for today's video. Remember to enjoy your hobbies. And until next time, have fun and take time for your passions. So high, I'm hypnotized.